Here we go. We got the Rams and the Cardinals. They're battling it out. Arr. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Doomcast number 70. My name is Charlie McGrath. My co-founder, my friend Doug Owen, he's joining me here as we roll into Doomcast number 70. Doug Owen. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good, man. Good, 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 good. I forgot the line. I'm, I'm the founder of WideAwakeNews.com. <laughs> You're the founder of BlacklistedNews.com. Together, we are the co-founders of Doomcast.com, the Doomcast program, heard weekly. And this is uh, number 70. Wow. 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 We made it. Wow, we haven't killed each other. We haven't decided to just throw in the towel because of our fun. egos. Nah, we don't have egos. Do we? We don't battle it out like that, do we? No, we not we disagree sometimes, but not often. Not not often. Not yeah. not deeply. Not like, uh, you know, except for your heathenistic atheist ways, agnostic. Hey, come on now. Sorry. Sorry. Come man. on. Sorry. It's, it's you not can be true. agnostic. What? Is how we baptize terrorists. Boy, that crap is true. That crap. Mm. I mean, if you saw the report that came out, and we'll we'll get into that a little bit. But first, before we get rolling, I have a coworker. His name is Sam, and uh, Sam and I were, you know, we we uh, argue, we and jokingly back and forth, and he's pretty witty, uh, and uh, so we we throw jabs at each other uh, <laughs> during the day, and you know, it's slow this time of year for us. So in it's in cold the world, too, right? Really? Uh, no, no, no. It was it was like forty five degrees here today. It's it was. I mean, everything's melting. It's it's almost spring here. Oh, okay. That's yeah. that. That's short weather. That's uh, football yeah, weather. It's, well, it's it. You know, here it's short weather, especially uh, in mid December. But um, we were uh, I, we were flipping each other some grief today, and uh, and he said, "Why? Well, why do you just go home and and do your doomcast, you doomer?" <laughs> doomcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Is, Has he listened? He listened? Oh yeah, he he get well. Well, no, that's the point of it. That's the point of this uh, this call out here to Sam uh, because he said he used to listen to it, but it just it you know because he has it on uh, it automatically when we upload it to my YouTube channel, it tweets out and and he gets that and he listened to it. But he said that that he doesn't stop, he doesn't listen to it anymore. It, it's too doom and gloomy. Really? And, uh, well, he was just saying that to throw a bar a jab at me. So oh, here's yeah. the deal, Sam. If you're listening, if you're not listening, eh, then you're not going to hear this. And I'm not out anything, but I have a half ounce, beautiful little silver round here. And uh, if Sam's listening, um, I'm going to give him that round. All he's got to do is say, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'll report next week. But, you know, my, my, my guess is he's been listening for quite some time and he's probably listening right now. And he's not stupid enough. Uh, to, I mean, you know, he's pretty stupid, but he's not stupid enough to look a, a half ounce silver round gift horse in the mouth. He will be taking it. And uh, I'll gladly, I'll gladly partake uh, in uh, in this wager with him. So, uh, Sam, I hope you're listening. I hope I have to pay you half an ounce of silver, and I'll announce the results next week on Doomcast number seventy one. If you know, God willing, we make it there. You're like a pioneer. You're trading silver and yeah. uh, jabbing. Giving, oh yeah, giving. Uh, I'm building. I'm building a, at work. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're 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 comrades. So I'm building up uh, <laughs> comrades. You know, hey, don't say that. Uh, People Why? get confused because, uh, you know, I was listening to you and Eric Lovely talk about the Doomcast. Yeah. You guys are the Doomcast. Come on. You guys are the two main guys in the Doomcast. Oh, come on now. We got to rename the show. We got to name, rename our show or, yeah, or my like show? Yeah, Sunny Happy Days with Doug and Charlie. Well, you know what? I don't think it's sunny that. Sunny Happy mean, Days. We, we, we talk about stuff that's that's fairly doomy. We just, we kid about it a little. We I mean, need you're, a, you're, we need a you're jingle. Certainly more, you're certainly more sunnier. Than, than I. Than, than some, yeah. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Just a little bit. Definitely. Maybe. Definitely. Maybe. Maybe. And everything's everything's right on track in your world and that kind of thing. There's nothing there's nothing to fear out there. I mean, sure oil's falling through the floor. That's good. Sure right? we're sending uh, we're gonna save three hundred and eighty dollars on average now with the, the cheap gas prices. You know what's hilarious? I've never heard more people being upset about low gas prices in my life. Are you uh, serious? People Don't, are, I mean, are, I mean, yeah, I'm serious. I mean, no, no, no. About well, not... oil prices or gas prices? Which one? Uh, your gas prices. I, I, I mean, heard gasolina. Anybody, I haven't heard anybody complain about the price of lowering gas. But I've I, seen I, it all over the place. It's, it's a sign of economic doom. The last time this it happened, is. the it is. the world blew up. It's true. Because it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. Well, here, no. look, here's, 
here's the thing, Owen, and and I don't know that it translates in. I mean, certainly gas prices haven't fallen forty percent in the last you know six weeks. No, but they're they're definitely edging down, and you know any money that that you can save or I can save is great. But are are you, you know, saving money? Well, our gas prices have come off a little bit. I mean, but are you saving money? If I'm not putting into a tank, I'm saving a little money. Yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, you know, looking at some of the latest stats, most people are not saving money. No, no, most yeah, and, and but hold a lot on. of people I, in wait America. A hold on. And, Before we get and, into that, I want to get I want to reestablish how oil is an indicator of global economy. I mean, that well, is I, a, I think so too. But oh. I mean, it, I think one of the things that's really interesting about it is that it shows people that you know there's just a few guys, John Kerry, the Saudis, and uh, maybe the OPEC cartel that can just decide that hey, gas is half of what it used to cost, and when you think about it, this is what's so surreal. I was looking at a picture of uh, a friend of mine at a gas station, and it's only, you know, eight years old. And uh, gas was right at $2. Right. And so it's, you know, we've just gotten so used to these <laughs> crazy high prices that, um, you know, the idea that somebody could just, you know, make that half <laughs> cost half of what it cost before. I, it blows some people's minds. I mean, how could this happen? How could gas just, I mean, what's going on? And I, I think that when you look at most of the answers without thinking that there's a political and a new world order agenda afoot, then, right. you know, you're probably, it's supply, demand. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Are we, are well, we in an the, economic war with Russia? What's going on? Uh, well, yeah. there's, there, you know, the, the thing about the fall of 40% in such a short amount of time, um, I mean, yeah, if you're looking, all things being equal, and it's just a demand issue, so the demand's going down, so uh, the price of oil per barrel has fallen to, you know, under 60, uh, I saw some uh, reports today, then that's a very much uh, telling uh, uh, sign of the economy to slow down, uh, you know, and, and I see this in Or is that a that surplus? We, I mean, this is the other side of it. This no, 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 is the no, response no. because no. the U.S. has been fracking the F out of this place. I mean, I, I know guys that... Uh, a, a, a telecom there, guy that's making six figures that's uh, excited about retiring and going and working with fracking companies. And I'm just like, oh, my God, <laughs> what do I yeah, say? But, but, I can't say look, anything here, this guy. Oh, man. It, obviously, it's a surplus. Obviously, it's a surplus one way or the other. Either it's a surplus because there's not as many tankers that are uh, coming or not many container ships that are coming across the pond as there was you know, three months ago. Or there's a surplus because – uh, the Canadian uh, oil shell and the Bakken uh, is pumping out uh, oil uh, like crazy. So there's a surplus one way or the other, uh, either demand or... Do you believe that? Do you believe that's the truth? I, I believe that, that there's a 700,000 barrel a day surplus being produced right now uh, on planet Earth. I, I believe that. And it's either by demand or by excess production. But the excess production, you know, to say that oil is going to stay low or, and continue to drop would mean that a lot of these fracking companies, a lot of these companies that are making it big uh, in North Dakota and in Canada, can Ukraine. continue. No, Ukraine can still produce it cheap, but they can't here. You, you know, the, the the figures are like this eighty dollar mark for them to be profitable. A lot of these companies that are producing uh, the shale oil, fracking oil, uh, from you know the North Dakota and up into Canada. Right. If they can't, if they can't, because it's at fifty five or sixty dollars a barrel. Well, guess what? Some of that, some of that surplus is going to go away. It's going to evaporate. Uh, I hear it's, it's all about the market share. The Saudis want the market yeah. share. They're afraid that if we go through another embargo, that they're going to, you know, it, it makes it profitable. I just don't too. know if that's true. I don't. I just don't see, believe it either. I mean, you saw the the latest round of economic sanctions against uh, Venezuela. Russia. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, Venezuela. Yeah, they've got – this is – hush, hush. People yeah. aren't talking well, about this. The, they're uh, going after the Venezuelans, and of course, you know, they've just ousted uh, a lot of these NGOs, Freedom House, USAID, U.S. ambassadors saying that they're starting trouble, and uh, they've uh, taken uh, – I like to say a nationalistic approach to their media, taking back over their media, and it's like, uh, you know, we should just go go ahead and sanction everybody while they're watching uh, the the breads and circuses and other crazy things that I think you know uh, are. Well, well, Johnny Manziel gets to the start. Well, I mean, you know, you've got the Eric Garner, you've got the whole uh, the world paying attention to police brutality, which I, right. you know, uh, the 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 
I'm glad to see professional athletes taking a political stance with the I can't breathe shirts because it brings, yeah. uh, you know, a, a, a lot of awareness to police brutality. And uh, we need to have that conversation because we have just as a society here in the United States and uh, the Western world have just gone towards a, a militaristic approach to handling Stupid things like, you know, kids throwing paper airplanes on uh, buses and uh, eating Pop-Tarts in the shape of guns. Right. We've, we've gone crazy <laughs> with the police state, and, and we have to take a step back. And I think, uh, you know, it's an interesting conversation that should be had. But while that's happening, oh, man, <laughs> there's a lot of other things that are happening in the background. And there is yeah. definitely an economic war that is uh, taking place. So... Uh, while I do think that human rights and uh, civil rights of you know, people in this country is a huge, huge issue. And, of course, the solution is more Department of Justice money being withheld from different uh, you know, police organizations, blah, 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 blah. And federalization, more money for the good people that are wor- good cops working with you know, the Eric Holder's clan. So, uh, and, and Doug, of course, is saying this all tongue-in-cheek. Before the comments start uh, rolling in, why not? Yeah, I, I, I like to be a contrarian. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not for this. I'm just explaining the 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 narrative yeah. as people see it, and, and you know what you have to counter. That's what you you know when you and your buddy are jabbing each other at work. That's what they think. They're like, have you seen that they, they they didn't pay attention to maybe I don't know the last 15 years of police brutality the, and how it has just taken shape and form in the the drug war. But they might notice LeBron James wearing a T-shirt that says "I can't breathe." Right. People are getting so upset about it because Kobe like, Bryant oh, too. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, big, big time. They're like, "Oh, I just want my brains in circuses. I don't want to have to think about things like cops being the crap out of people." Yeah, yeah. yeah you Tamir know. Rice and Daniel Rodrigo and James Boyd and Eric Garner. You know, you know to think that this is uh, my dad last night at dinner. Okay, I hate to interject. Yeah. He asked me. He, he said. He said. So, uh, how's your uh, radio show thing going? I'm like, oh, it's going well, Dad. You know, everything's pretty good, and we got a pretty good fan base. He's like, do people talk about the potential for a race war? And I'm like, wow, oh, no. oh my God, you know, this is crazy. It's surreal that my dad's, like, asking me questions about a race war. And I'm like, all right, have you been on The Blaze? Have you been listening to Glenn Beck? What's going on, Pops? What are you doing? Did he you just talk he... him off the ledge? No, 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 no. He's... He's totally, uh, you know, his his whole line is, well, you know, the government might be broke, and yeah, we might be all these things, but they can always tax the people, and, uh, you know, people want to be here more than they want to be other places. So in his mind, you know, things are going to be pretty, uh, because there's so, I guess the way he sees it, there's so many people that are vested and have vested it's interests. It's really hard for an, for an average person in this country, and, and it's not disparaging to an average person in this country. Right. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> to family members or to friends, it's really hard for them to accept uh, any of this doomer news, right? When, when they when they make statements just like your dad did, which he's not no, wrong. There's, I, there's you people, know, I, there's I, I think that want to be just here. He has a different perspective because he's gone through things that, you know, you and I and others haven't. Well, but you don't, but I, I, this, look. He's gone you, through you don't race, have to be, race wa- riots, the Watts riots. Sure, he's gone but you don't through. have to go through that. You don't, you, you have to, I mean, you could just look at our southern border and be 15 years old and re- and not been through all those things, not been through, you know, the, the L.A. riots or, or what uh, happened in the civil rights uh, uh, times in the 60s. You don't have to go through that to, to to realize that you know that that bad things can happen. All you need to do is is look around the world and see how some uh, a lot of the folks on this planet are living, and you know, and then look at our culture. Look at the you know, you know we still a have of fear. a LeBron. You know, he, no, he, no. He, well, well, what he said, and he's 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 talked about this often, was that when he was a kid living on the Texas Gulf Coast, mm-hmm. they freaked him out as, as a child Obama? about. The Cold War about, uh, you know, the missile crisis. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a big, big, big deal if you were on the Gulf Coast. And it was a big talks, deal if you were on planet Earth. I mean, that well, was he said, second you know, to every, pay for You know, every day at school, getting under the desk, which yeah, would have done cover. nothing. But, you know, this duck and cover thing. He yeah. said that that had like a really traumatic effect on him when he was a kid. He said, you know, that that really because, you know, he's kind of antisocial. 
And I, mm-hmm. you know, I can kind of get it the older I get. It's like, you know, less and less people you want to socialize with, right? Yeah. <laughs> At least, you know, it, most of the time anyway. You, you, get, you yeah. go to Walmart and you look around and you're like, I don't need to find any friends here. I just want to get out of look, here. Look, my point was this, that, that I mean, not uh, – the point is it is easy for people to look around the world and say – we still have it really good here in the U.S. because you, if you if you tune into pop culture, if you tune into your television, you're always being entertained and you're always seeing you know this bright sunshiny advertisement for new cars or new homes or new whatever. Go out and shop, go out and spin, go out and buy. And we still have a very rich nation that uh, uh, is you know putting checks in the mail to over fifty percent. At least government is in one form or another to fifty percent of the people in the country, and and you don't see the kind of abject poverty even though it's growing and expanding uh, in our country and the middle class is falling away, you still don't see the kind of poverty we see just south of the border or down in South America or, as you see, in China, uh, the largest economy in the world. So it, it is hard, I think, for a lot of people in our country, in the West, to, look, to talk about these subjects that are Doomer-esque and think that uh, you know, that, that could potentially be the, the direction we're headed. We're still better off than the other guy is an easy perspective to have uh, in the United States of America in 2014 going into 2015. Well, I mean, it, it, it's better. You know, we've, we've talked about this often. It's relative, right? If you're in Russia right now, guess where, you, guess where you're going? Absolutely effing nowhere. Nowhere. You know why? Because your ruble isn't worth crap. Oh, now, that's bull crap. So that's, if you're sitting there, propaganda. It, that is not propaganda. It is, propaganda. It is absolutely not. Look, if your dollar went to nothing, guess what? Guess where you would go? Nowhere. Look, you, you would stay right here. And that's why people in the U.S. This is the this is the facade. You say, well, you know, we, we still get Cheetos pretty cheap. Well, they've taken half of the Cheetos out of the bag. You, you say, well, we still get, I don't know, diet soda pretty cheap. You go look at the the amount of ounces per. Uh, dollar that you get today that you got 10 years ago, it's a tenth of it. I mean, the, the people don't see the inflation because things have been withered down. The, the, the products, you know, the Prada isn't that great anymore. Right. The, the, <laughs> the bull of a watches that you find coming from the, you know, Europe, uh, Swiss watches aren't as great anymore. Parts are made in China. So, uh, people don't see this. It's the same thing for the Russians. They're totally apathetic. You ask them, they're freaking happy. They're nationalistic. They're like, sure. F the West. We're good. We don't care. And it doesn't matter because they are not going anywhere. <laughs> they're not good. They, well, they no, don't have to contend with that. Yeah, no, but, that, but, you know, it, but it, that's the whole thing. It's this whole projection of what it is to be rich, what it is to have uh, uh, to, to lose. I mean, here's what the Russian PM course said warns against hysterics over ruble collapse now if you are living abroad if you're living uh, as an expat and maybe renting uh, your pad this is a very common uh, thing to do if you're renting your pad that's in uh, uh, Russia yeah uh, I was gonna St. Petersburg's a really good example I know people that own apartments in St. Petersburg and they live in India they they uh uh, they, they, well, they they're they're international travelers because they could, you know they can just make so much money off of this. This is the same kind of thing that people in Spain were able to do ten years ago. the The housing boom there provided all of this capital that uh, was just it, it was just riding the wave, and, and people were living off of that. And those things are taken out from underneath them. So yeah, you can do all right. Yeah, there's riots in Spain. Yeah, people uh, they're gonna. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say if you going. if you look at Western Europe, there's certainly a lot more economic uncertainty than there is in Russia. Even with the forty percent, you know, they've, they've all seen those 40- people that I know, they're all they they have a choice. They either go back to Russia, <laughs> right? Either, or and that's what Putin's saying. Hey. Come back, come back, come back yeah. home, comradeskis. You come listen, back home, let, or let, you let are this. going to be out of uh, not, not, no, not, no good. Oh, and let me, let me address this this Russian thing because yes, their currency has fallen forty percent in about the same amount of time that the oil has a uh, uh, global oil has fallen forty percent. But you know, when when the dollar falls here, we're told by CNBC, MSNBC, and all the other 
uh, business media outlets that that's great for our economy because it's suddenly it's cheaper for countries to come in and buy our products and we start exporting more because our dollar is falling. But when it when it's it happens, good for some people, Charlie, it just depends on who you are. Are you are you somebody who works about in the a Russians, factory? Or are you somebody that's speculating well, it, and uh, making money on uh, the stock? If market? I'm speculating from the United States into Russia, or if I'm living in India in Russia and I'm relying uh, relying on the ruble rental income of my are, uh, are you betting against the ruble because it's making you money or are you going going to go with I'm the ruble about because the, you're nationalistic I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the the prospective economic future for russia versus the prospective economic future for western europe and by uh by happenstance the west the united states as well russia is russia still has they're gonna get all that chinese it, junk that we have now so look, you, they, you look not, around that's what they'll get <laughs> look around look around kids can i can i finish owen can no, i finish I'm just teasing you jeez man come on so the, 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 the average Russian has 60% disposable income because when the fall of the Soviet Union occurred, most of this state-owned land was eventually given over to the people. They have far more uh, uh, spendable income after uh, their expenses than we do here in the West. More importantly, but I mean, they have, okay, well, they stop, have, stop, they stop, have stop. a massive reserve. Look, look, of look, foreign stop. You, okay, this is the deal. Okay, these are old economies. Now, if we, if somebody said, you know what, we're just gonna take over the U.S. and just give everybody uh, four hecta acres, because you know we'd have to go, you know, totally metric. European. Yeah, <laughs> we'd go metric, and they'd say you get five, fifteen hecta acres. And uh, we can all we can all grow corn in this new neo feudalist society and sell it to the World Trade Organization. You're yeah, about North you could be not Russia. I that mean, that <laughs> is exactly what's happening there. That's what's happening in the Ukraine, thanks to Victoria Newland. Uh, you know, you're, you're comparing two They're different. The I mean, Russia and the it's Ukraine the same, are not same, the same. same. Yes. First of all, Ukrainian. They are now. Here. All the no, Ukrainians. That uh, how many millions? Uh, how many hundreds of thousands of the Ukrainians are now Russians? I was joking Listen, about this, and I, I said, you know, we, we're so upset about all the people coming over here that can't compete. What if we just had an influx of like 30 million Canadians that are just as well trained, that could absolutely well, do country. our do our job, and they would be willing to do it for, I don't know, maple syrup and uh, cheap beer? What would we do then? Oh, my God. That would be post-apocalyptic here in this country. All right. Wait a minute. Now, wait. Now, I that's get a what point. they have, I get, I get that's a, what they I have get to deal answer. with there. No, it isn't. It is what they have to deal with. First of all, what most if you're of what if you're a Russian taxi oh driver? God, now you have Ukrainians impossible. coming in. They're this coming in. They're taking your job. Tem- you you are you are absolutely completely off the rails, Owen. That's what I'm telling you right now. They, look, Ukraine is a product of NATO right now. What's happening there? The collapse of their currency, which is far greater than the collapse of the ruble, the collapse of the economy in Ukraine, the uh, implementation You're bail of them massive. Out. Don't uh, worry, the, the, the IMF's going to give them money. No, they're already there. They're, uh, the IMF <laughs> is already saying they, uh, they're already begging. They need the austerity. They need to be punished. Exactly. For exactly. Just like the they did in Greece. Them. Just like they've done throughout Europe. That's why you see riots in Europe right now. Dumb That's man. why you see. Greece on the precipice once again, but Ukraine is yeah, not. I mean, Russia. tens of okay. Here's something that's crazy. Okay, tens oh of God. thousands of you. I guess uh, I'll of, answer of this. Greeks the are are uh, tens of thousands of Greeks are rioting and yeah. marching. Right, and there's no media coverage. Nobody here in the U.S. cares. And, and Italy, the same thing in Italy. And but that but well, you're, you're comparing you're comparing them to Ukraine to Russia. Why? And you're comparing Why the economy. It's it's the same uh, thing. I mean, it. they're outdated. That's they're that's outdated, antiquated. Out. I can't talk. I they're, can't talk. You they're old in. militaristic economies. They can never. It, this is the problem. This Who is, the whole, is Ukraine? They don't. Ukraine have, is a modern NATO economy. This is the IMF. What are they going to make? In. What do you think that they're making over there, Charlie McGrath? You what know what? You, Look, IMF wants Eastern Ukraine. They want Eastern Ukraine so uh, Joe Biden's son can go in there and frack the hell out of it and extract all the gas and all the energy resources there. They want the corridor controlled between Russia and Western Europe because Russia, this nation you're painting as a picture of being destitute, isn't destitute. They have oodles and oodles of foreign cash reserve. They can pay all their debts for almost yeah, but, two but, years but, but, just on foreign, foreign cash reserve. Plus, they're sitting on just oh. a, an ocean of natural gas and, and provide – 30% of the energy to the West, to Western Europe. They don't need Europe or the IMF. They can sell it to Russia. They can sell it to India. They can sell it to, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, they can sell it to China or India, and they are. They're building pipelines to do just that. They have a, a robust 
uh, industrial sector in their country. They, y- y- you can't say Ukraine and Russia are the same in the same boat. Well, they're because... right next to each other, and they have similar <laughs> they have similar resources. Okay, similar well, we're just like Mexico because we're right next to them. <laughs> well, we are. I mean, Mexico is yeah. a huge oil producer. They're number what two, three in the world as far as reserves. I mean, they are up there. They, you yeah. know, same thing with Venezuela. Venezuela is number three. We don't hear all about it because it's just uh, not a big deal, and people don't talk about it. But I mean, when it, you know, comparing Russia, I'm I'm just saying the same culture, same types of people. People hold on, in hold on. I, I got an update. The... I got a I got a Craig update. Craig <laughs> producer for thirty three. Uh, he said the stream died. Son of a bitch, that stream died. Ah, stream I thought died. using I thought using uh, Bill Gates Microsoft <laughs> would would prevent that from happening. Damn you. Bill Gates. Damn you, Bill Gates and your Microsoft. All right, well, we'll start up stream two. We've got Doomcast. No, do not share it on Facebook, you bastards. Uh, stream two. Anyway, uh, what they, anyway so anyway, no, uh, what I'm saying about- is that, uh, you know, it depends on what you consider good life, man, and what, it, what do you want to do with your life. If you want to, like... Uh, Grow grain uh, and hang out with <laughs> donkeys you on your fifteen hectare acres. Oh then that's God. the place you want to go to, man. And if you yeah. want iPad skis, you want uh, <laughs> you want uh, LED laser dazzlers and all the cool crap and iPhones that we have over here. Then you know, then life's you know. Yes, Russia. They're right. They're all riding on donkeys. I mean, going to the their thing. four hectares so they can grow some <laughs> maize. <laughs> yeah, you know oh, what? Life is kind of a, you know ridiculous. what? Go over there, and uh, that's why people are on heroin because it's boring as crap. Uh, I've got a friend of mine that that goes over there often, and uh, actually, I, I have this is this is like the same argument where you're like, I have like black friends. No, I yeah. actually know two people that uh, g- often go to St. Petersburg. I know yeah. some expats that live there, and I get their they ride their donkey into St. Petersburg, D- dude. I'm telling you, once you get outside of it, it's like China, bro. It's not a good. People are like, oh, China is the greatest economy in the world. It's biggest. I'm like, yeah, if you want to go and be a slave and work in some factory and, you know, I don't know, work uh, seven days a week, uh, that's the place to do it, man. That's the place to do it. If you want, if you don't care about your radioactive water, I mean, we've got, we've got an EPA that's completely inept and incompetent, but, uh, you know, at least Cargill, here's, here's one for you, Charlie. I'll, I'll bring the, the conversation back to happy. Wait, 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 before we do, I want to talk about, I, I just want to interject one thing on Venezuela because I found it absolutely comical. The headline, you, you brought up the, uh, the, the sanctions against Venezuela, yeah. but the headline was the United States Congress has passed a bill, which would impose sanctions on Venezuela officials found to have violated protester rights. And I thought that was uh, very uh, comical that uh, our Congress is going to uh, impose sanctions because of the way that the Venezuelan government— If they don't government... like it, we'll rectal feed them until they do. We'll, yeah, you we'll... saw that, did you? <laughs> yeah. People are like, oh, they're... this is hilarious. They're like, all right, the rest of the world doesn't know that we torture people, and we are so divine and so godlike here in the United States, and we've signed all these little pieces of paper that say that we don't do things like the Geneva Convention and all these other things that we, we hold over all these other bad people, and uh, you know that's why we steal their resources. And uh, if, we, if we ever find out, if the American people find out that we've been shoving hoses up people's asses, well, th- there's going to be an imminent attack on the United States. We're all going to die. The jihadists are going to – ISIS is coming. They're going to start beheading people. I mean, and, and you know what? It, what's so condescending and stupid is that uh, everybody in the world knows that we torture people. All the terrorists, you know, have – that have uh, – I, I, you know – they're waging jihad against us. I think that they know that. I, I think they know that the U.S. tortures people. So who doesn't know that we're torturing people? That's what's hilarious. It's like who's who's uh, the only people that uh, that didn't think that we were torturing people are the same people that think it's okay. I heard a guy on local radio saying, "Well, that rectal feeding thing isn't that bad." I swear to God. He said, yeah. this re- rectal thing's not that bad. I had to get my jaw wired shut, and they fed me through my butt for months. And I was just like, <laughs> anything to get Dick Cheney off the hook. Anything That's right. to oh. – It's the same idiots, right, that are, that are out there that say, well, you know, uh, old Eric Garner, he was breaking a law. He was selling Lucy's on the corner, yeah. you know, e- even though even though it's uh, you know punishable by a ticket, a fine – 
uh, you know, and he kind of deserved what he got because he's, he's fat. Breaking the law. He's fat. Yeah, That's why, fat. you know, and yeah. uh, you're not going to get your Obamacare because you're fat it, or most because most people don't give a crap about another human being. That's why. And they hear about rectal feeding or being forced to stand for 60 hours at a time, being put to bed on a cold concrete floor with no pants and you freeze to death and they just deserve it. Even though, what was it, 26 out of 100 plus? Uh, that were being tortured, had nothing to do with Al-Qaeda. They had no affiliation whatsoever, were completely innocent, and eventually, uh, in a lot of cases, just had to be let go because there was nothing that they could uh, uh, pursue uh, against them. Uh, yeah, it, you know, the, the, the people that don't know about it and the people that are signed on, the neocon set, uh, the, the warmongers, the uh, uh, forever patriots, regardless if it's uh, – you know, killing people, Those are innocent people. Are Those are just, just no, no, the, the modern, the neo patriot, the neo patriot. I like country. that term, neo patriot. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I think faux patriot's great too. Faux yeah, patriot. We just, we just, we just coined neo patriot. The neo patriot that hears this is going to make an excuse for Dick Cheney and George Bush. They're going to make. Did an you excuse. hear what uh, Hayden said? We got a Home Depot of information. His metaphors are getting so ridiculous and so stupid that it makes me want to vomit. Where's Please vomit mind? on me. Give me the give me the lowdown. <sighs> vomit this, on me. I mean, it, well, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a squirter, Dale. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you correlated that with puking on me. <laughs> we have developed ultimate male vitality supplement with eight yeah. concentrated super herbs. God, yeah. he just sounds excited talking about it, don't he? Mm. In- indeed. <laughs> Alright, enough of that. Oh, oh no. I'm sorry. I'm hold on. <laughs> so, hold on. Hold on there, lady. You just can't get enough of that squirter, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Back to real news. Back to real Hayden. things happening. Tell me about Hayden. Vomit so, on yeah, he one. said that there, there's a Home Depot of information that we got. And of course, you know, he's like, ah, well, you know, I, I, I he's developed ticks. He doesn't look good. He, If, if you've seen him, he's course he was head of the the cia he's the guy that when pressed by the press said that the fourth amendment doesn't require probable cause i mean and that was when i first really started paying attention to him and all the you know he's just one of these mouthpieces for the establishment now that uh you know obviously was one of the architects for this uh black site torturing and um i mean you know it, it's kind of weird because you have people like Feinstein with this torture report. She's out uh, going after her. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of theatrics, really, political theater for the minds. But yeah. it's going to be interesting to see if, uh, you know, the, the one thing that we've always had is like, well, we're better than other people. You, you were mentioning this. This U.S. Uh, what, 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 what do they call it? They call it uh, we, exceptionalism. We're exceptionalism. We're exceptional yeah. over other countries. Well, we do the same stuff that Assad does. So nobody's noticed that Israel has bombed Syria, and uh, as per usual, they're just bombing random sites. Uh, maybe I don't know. I, you you would think that with the intel that they'd have, they would hit the right sites, but um, nobody's mentioned that. There's a there's a there's a little war happening here on the ground. Uh, yeah, a lot, lot of war. Former CIA uh, Director Michael Hayden on Wednesday defended the agency's post-9-11 interrogation methods following the release of the Senate report that slammed the tactics as brutal and ineffective. These interrogations gave us kind of a, I love this, you know, verbiage, kind of a, you know, a Home Depot-like storage (laughs) of information on al-Qaeda on which we relied, is what he told Fox News. And, you know, the neo the neocons and the neo-patriots will just gobble that up. Oh, yeah, Home Depot. You need uh, some bear do- paint, maybe a paint yeah. brush, another yeah. tool. What, we what's need their tools. Slogan? Well, let's do this is what the, the, the Home Depot slogan let's is. Let's roll. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. Anal feeding people, freezing them to death, beating them, Hanging torturing them. them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just uh, – I don't know. I think this is really a show to try to scare other people. Like, look at the heinous shit we do. Okay, and this is this is just what we'll tell you about the real stuff. You know, with the acid, the children, the testicles, the pliers, all those things that you heard about. Oh, those those are all redacted. All sixteen thousand pages of that stuff. We're not going to talk about rectal feedings. Yeah, we're still doing that right now, and uh, we do it to prisoners in the U.S. all the time. Whenever they decide that they don't want to eat, and they're going to kill themselves because they're just that tired of living under this torturous, you know, 
system that we're we're forcing them into. So they just want to die and stop eating. We'll just shove a tube up their ass. What do you think yeah, about that? Eat them that way. So yeah. that doesn't scare the shit out of you. I don't know what will. Kind of tongue in cheek there, Owen. <laughs> Literally. 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 I knew I, way back when mm-hmm. um, that that uh, the I, I don't know how to I don't know how to segue into this. Uh, there is a uh, a group of people, right? Extreme, uh, extremely. Uh, in, in, engrossed and entrenched in alcoholism, they get, to, yeah, right. get, get to a point. And you know, we we grew up owning bars in, when I was uh, when I grew up in Butte, Montana. Charlie, uh, Charlie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, there was a actual people that would be so wanting to get you know their their buzz on, uh, or just they couldn't get enough alcohol that they that was actually a procedure. Have we talked but about that before? We talked Where, about butt chugging. Or yeah, you've been there, d- yeah. you've done that. Yeah, we covered that. This yeah. is 70. Of hey, course hey, we've covered butt chugging. Yeah, Craig Simpsons, <laughs> do not put that into the TOC, the table of contents. We don't need another reference. We already have no butt, one. No butt chugging. You, 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 yeah, you've given a lot of puking, squirting references already. Yeah, we've already gone down into the gutter a few times. That's, hey, did you hear about Iowa? They've got an interesting thing they're going to allow people to do that uh, hey, scares hey. the crap out of me. What is it, Doug Owen? They're going to allow people to use smartphone apps as their official driver's license. So all Ooh. of you Christians out there looking for the mark of the beast, you might find it in Iowa. There she be. Yeah. There she be. Mm-hmm. There she be. She's, it's a mini beast. It's not the full-on Beelzebub, but a uh, mini beast. Well, getting closer to the cashless society, the the RFID chip in the forehead, the you know, aren't we past that? Isn't that like passe and kind of the RFID chip or the or the? Actually, there's a there's a really interesting piece about the, the Dutch. The Dutch are excited. What is it? About... It's the electronic tattoo. That's the newest thing, right? Yeah, you can get a tattoo, or you can that get has, a chip that has all your info in it. Or you can just shove your RFID fob under your skin, which is kind of you know, I guess it's no more foreign than fake breast or something else that you can use. Or to butt chugging. <laughs> Yeah, so there is that. There Sorry. is that uh, as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's crazy stuff. There's all sorts of yeah. stuff. I mean, I, I was just reading uh, Natural Blaze, injectable 3D vaccines, programmable particles, and other things that are uh, coming down the pipeline, literally, literally down your pipeline. You know, uh, <laughs> if you got acid reflux, rather than sticking a scope, it's a big procedure, costs a lot. They're just going to give you a pill that has a. I've had that. Have a, you, you ate the pill? Or no, no, no. I've had, the, I've, I've had the big old scope. Yeah, I mean, that's old school. Yeah, it's, it hurts. Uh, uh, they used to cut a big, you know, 14, 15 inch uh, hole in the back of your leg if they wanted to replace your thigh. And now they just separate the muscle right in the front and uh, voila, and glue you back together. You don't even get stitches. Got a buddy of mine who had a. But, uh, Why you would know, you want to replace your thigh, Doug Owen? A uh, uh, hip, sorry. Hip. Oh, hip. oh, gotcha, gotcha. The, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they do. I think like a bad bone. football injury where your thigh is. No, sorry. Yeah, replaced. his hip. He had to have a hip replacement. Now, every once in a while, he squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Okay. So, what's the point that we're getting nanotechnology? Is we're going to have a you know cancer cured? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, we're so beyond a chip. Chip. I mean, come on. Chip Smart chip. A pin and chip, your chip to your, I mean, to your to your money. I mean, that's just an antiquated idea. You can use biometrics. Uh, the White House, Barack Obama himself, is pushing to get rid of passwords and uh, using all of your facial. And, and this is a really bad idea because once you hack people's uh, biometrics, then there's just there's no other resort. I mean, even DNA. At some point, somebody's going to figure out how to hack your DNA. You know, so yeah. no matter what. What it is, whether it's your eyeball, your DNA, your nose hair, whatever. What's the it is. end game, Owen? What's the end game of all of it? Are we just going to be all cogs in the big machine in 1984, Orwellian type? Uh, you know, two minutes of hate every morning. Only people think it's and- cool. Only people want to get into it. I mean, you know, I, I think that some people think that it's a direct sinister, the Illuminati that is just trying to do this to people. I think that uh, you, I don't think it's nearly that simple. I think that there's people that want to you know, make themselves better than what they are. And uh, it speaks to our ego as human beings. You always want to improve yourself. You want to impress people. You want, you know, do, do you do, but, it, do, you yeah, do no. it with shoes? Do you do it with the latest app? Do you do it with your, 
knowledge of pop sure, culture. Sure, and technology is, I mean, you already see that today. Do I have the iPhone 6? Do I have, sure. you know, the, the latest gadget? So, yeah, there'll be a lot of people on board just for the, the, the wow factor, the cool factor of it. Uh, only, you know, constant only, only monitoring cool. of your system by a constant monitoring of your system by, you know, some kind of uh, biometric uh, implant. Have you heard about Nest? Have you seen the commercials for Nest? I mean, we're here. It's this little kid, and he's like, hey, you know, I would be bad, and I would be tearing shit up in your house right now, but... And he looks up, and there's a camera up on the mantle, and uh, my mom and dad can watch me anytime from their smartphone, device, iPad, blah, blah, blah. You know, and he's making the pitch for you, and it's, you know, it's a brave new world we live in, you know, where, you know, these things aren't... It's not the government trying to put it in your house. It's companies trying to get you to buy off on it and thinking total information, total awareness, total surveillance is... It's uh, a gross sector. It's a it's gross sector. Cheap, it's cheap. It's easy. People have always probably wanted to uh, watch everything that was happening, just didn't have the ability, didn't have the technology. It wasn't reasonable. It wasn't in, inexpensive. Now it is, and uh, you know, so that, so my point, I guess, in the long-winded answer here is that people want it, and people are buying into it. And if people think it's really cool, and I don't care who's selling it to them, you know, if if people uh, collectively, uh, humanity decides that, yes, let's jump into the primordial sure. sloop I, I of cannot, transhumanism. I cannot argue. I cannot argue with that at all because everything. Everything in in uh, in our society is a sales job. We right. have to be sold, and, and we are sold on everything. We, you know, I mean, the amount of power and the amount of uh, freedom that we've given away has all been sold to us for our own benefit, and our own good. And you know, it's ob- I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at the country you live in, and and, and ask yourself, you know, did this just happen, or did uh, us as a people allow this to happen? Yeah, we did. We were sold on the notion of. You know, security for safety, that kind, or security for freedom. Sure. Uh, or when, sure. You know what I'm saying? You're I mean, up you, what you look at. Uh, oh, I got a, a text here. The stream died too. Um, well, I mean, look at what what's happening in Venezuela, in Russia. Okay, they're right. going after the media. Oh, here we go again. They're going after independent media. Anybody yeah. that's not, uh, d- are, if you're if you're talking bad about the ruble, okay, that's unnationalistic, it's unpatriotic, and they're going to come after you. And you might not have to spend a lot of time in the gulag, but the FSB is going to come by and say. Doug Owen, Charlie McGrath, you can't talk ill of the government because that undermines the government, okay? So uh, the same thing's happening in Venezuela. It's the evil yep. U.S. They're coming after us. They're embedding themselves in the media. They're going to come and uh, you know undo all of the wonderful things that Maduro and the current government's doing. <laughs> Right, so uh, you know we know that they're great people, and they love the people, obviously, uh, because... They're opposed to the new world order, allegedly. The Russians, anyway. no way. They want to be the new world order. Well, exactly. And so, um, you know, we can, we're allowed to do this thing here. That's the one thing. That's why. That's why America's still the beacon. That's why RT is still operating. Okay. In other countries, they've shut it down. They've shut down RT. In the United States, we're so good at propaganda. We don't even care. We just no, let people no, do their you thing. Need, you need to have. I mean, you're right. You're right. I hate to say that, but you are. You you need to have the relief valve. Think of it as Glenn Beck. He was the relief valve for the Patriot movement, for the Tea Party movement. He was it. He was the one that gave voice and gave a, a solace to a lot of folks out there that were really, really pissed off. Yeah, that, that makes me sad if, if that's true. It is true. Look at it. You know, the the there was the just tea- a bunch of dumb rednecks. Oh, we're, oh, we're no, you know, if you're jumping on the Mormon bandwagon, I'm sorry. No nah, man, see you're missing out here because. Uh, would you, yeah? Will you, will you play a uh, waterboarding just for me one time? Oh sure, why Can you not? Get that? Uh... Waterboarding is how we baptize terrorists. That's the, now, right is after that, that. That's the Glenn Beck choir of stupid people that think that he's the Messiah. And, you know, right uh, after that, you could you could play that "Sorry, I'm a Squirter" clip. It would go hand in hand. It would it yeah. would actually flow. Really. No, yeah, I'm just saying. Really? Okay, let's try it. But, oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm a squirter, that's, Dale. That's what that's who it sounds like. It's pretty, pretty. Uh, it sounds like uncanny. Sarah Bailey. <laughs> do, do them again. Do do the waterboarding and then that one right after. All right. Uh... Waterboarding is how we baptize terrorists. Oh no, I'm out of power. <laughs> See the <laughs> damn new world order. They're always messing us Sarah up here. Sarah was not letting that go down. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'm a squirter, Dale. <laughs> that sounds just like it. We've made it. We've done yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Anyway, um, my point was this, that, that the Patriot movement, the, excuse me, the Tea Party movement, that began under, under uh, uh, Bush. Ron Paul. Right? Ron Paul. I, I was part of it. It was called the, yeah. tea, it was the, called the, 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 the tea Party because we threw the police state, we threw 9-11, we threw all of these things, the uh, you know killing of people at Waco, all of these yeah. boxes into sure. the river, and it was a symbol of – the Tea Party and yeah. people saying and look no and, more. and what happened you know especially after nine eleven and uh, we you know you you saw some personalities coming to the forefront and you right. saw somebody like oh, Glenn yeah. Beck that that spouted a lot of things that Ron but he, Paul but he only spoke to like stupid people I mean let's be honest if you're listening to Glenn Beck and you think that he's like a, I don't know like a legitimate person like he's a good right. person if you think that like a lot Glenn of people Beck, still do. Well, he may, that, you know, but but that's how you get. That's how you cull all the dumb sure. people out of your. But look uh, at book. how the establishment media <laughs> helped foment that. Help foment the dumb sure. people. Sure. Well, I mean, they they gave dumb, him a, they gave him a platform are watching on CNN. Establishment then they gave media. him a platform. I'm sorry. They gave him a platform on CNN. Then they gave him a platform on Fox. And sure. once uh, once that pesky uh, uprising of the libertarian mindset was. Uh, Hal well Turner control. and Sean Hannity. I mean, is a great example. A guy that was really radical and uh, just took it two steps farther. And so the people that listened to Sean Hannity were already, yeah, screw these people. And so the ones that were really hardcore would listen to this guy that would call in repetitively and, uh, you know, so they go to the next level of extremist, stupid. Yep stuff that uh you know people buy into i guess and uh, um the long short of it is that you know a lot of people were looking for a beacon of truth they were looking for validity from the you know the mainstream media i need to have somebody at cnn say 9-11 was an inside job to make it final or whatever it is you know people are looking for the mainstream media to say the truth Say the JFK was assassinated by the CIA. Say it. And so they're just hoping for that. that, that you're going to get some kind of official uh, a notice that Wikipedia says, yes, this is the truth. And, uh, you know, with that uh, is just no, But wait a, a minute. Are you, are you saying that they're... They're waiting for that because they're. Sure. I mean, they're listening they're, to Glenn Beck. I mean, obviously, you're waiting. because they're awake or because they are because they, they don't they, believe they, want it. they won't believe they're not awake. They won't believe that it's true until they hear it. So they're just hoping that they're going to hear it from their their truth tellers, which is still the mainstream media. If, if you're still looking to Glenn Beck for answers, then you're a pretty you know. I mean, come on, it's like a carny. I mean, it's just, you know. It's the, the the ring on the bottle game, you know. If you believe that, you know, it's so easy to throw the ring on the bottle. You're gullible. You're really gullible. I did a whole thing on my podcast about being gullible, and I, I won't do it again. But uh, when Thank I was a kid, God. I was really gullible. You know, I fell for all those stupid things that you you fall for. Oh yeah, X ray glasses. Yeah, those are gonna work. I'm gonna be able to see through people's stuff and embarrass people. It's like, well, you, did you really think you were going to get x-ray glasses for five bucks? I mean, come on. That'd be pretty cool if you could. If you if if you listen to Glenn Beck and if you think that he's a good person, you're just buying x-ray glasses. That's what he is. He's x-ray glasses. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and, and I'm with you. I mean, I am not a fan of Glenn Beck. I, I think uh, – you know, he saw a payday and he went for it. And, you know, he still he still has oh, a big following. you know following. what? Have you seen this? Okay, perfect example. Have you seen the rich white guy behind the hashtag blackout? Well, anyway, this guy that's blaming capitalism for everything that's bad that's happening in Ferguson and why the police are out of control is like this rich Jewish kid that uh, has, has made all these great, like, you know, all the swag. People are giving him tens of thousands of dollars and they have all these pictures of him and he's... He's, uh, you know, on private jets and he's on his private yacht with other like Jewish chicks hanging out. And you're like, oh, <laughs> so uh, that whole guy. Hold on. I got to find this. This is great. But it's a perfect example. Like people are like, oh, yeah, man, this guy totally uh, meet the rich white guy who is running United Blackout Boycott of Capitalism. So capitalism. <laughs> here you go. This is from Got News. It's great. 
But people, you know, this is a perfect example of somebody who's ahead of the curve, who sees the the writing on the wall, decides to start making some hoodies, and probably made a bazillion dollars. And this isn't the first time that this guy has been able to do it. Look at this guy, Charlie McGrath. You sent it to me? Yeah. Did you get it, or did I send that? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got it. Here you go. Here you go. His name is Michael Latt. He's a marketing direct. He's the marketing director. Control how black money is spent, and you win the game. That is his uh, moniker. That is the campaign slogan, right? So you <laughs> control how black money is spent. So let's go after those white, evil Jewish bankers with your <laughs> money, black people. Come on, this dude is like. I so mean, is he just making shirts and cups and what? Yeah, man, he's got he's got the hashtag. He, he started the label. He's got the website. I mean, he's he's sucking money out of black and people. And he found and he founded this in October. Yeah. Oh, this is a this is <laughs> this is okay. People listening out there that are struggling, people are like Doug, give me the solution. Okay, I would rather one of the doomers out there at least take people for a ride. Okay, you're smart enough to listen to this show. You're smart enough to scam people out of money. That's what people are doing. I wouldn't do it because I don't like low-hanging fruit and I just have a conscience. But if you don't, um, you just listen to Doomcast. Use this for financial advantageous purposes to you. Add it to your portfolio. You know, 2014, what did I say, Charlie McGrath? The world's coming to an end? No. Invest in evil. Invest oh, right. in evil 2014. Yeah, that was, that was uh, sure. And Max Kaiser said that gold was going to be $5,000 an ounce. And he said that uh, the economy was going to cra- uh, crap out. And Gerald Salente told you that there was going to be zombie malls. And there's some of them. But, uh, you know, uh, not everybody. See, this is the thing. This guy, he's <laughs> he's living well. He's living he's very living well. large. He's, He's living, living large is F, and there's other people that are crying about it. Why, why is my food stamps not working? Because you're not thinking out there, okay? And this you're guy. given, and you're given eighteen ninety nine or nineteen inety nine for I can't breathe t shirt that uh, that <laughs> he's uh, he's putting ten bag. bucks in his pocket for everyone he buys. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I'm telling uh, you, this dude sold it to LeBron. He's like, look, I've got an idea, okay? Fuck the white people. He's like, but aren't you white? Exactly. Give me the money. Give me the money. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. People see through it. It's like, of course, I knew it was evil. It's but on mean. the other side of the coin, you, you have the the uh, uh, the carnage whores, the pimps, uh, the Al Sharptons that show up so they can, uh, you know, increase their stature and 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 you know, buff start, up their start uh, a riot, uh, start a start a MSNBC show. Yeah, yeah. Resist. It, it, we much, we must, and we will much. About <laughs> that, be committed. That Some never gets King old. Wong. Yeah, that and then there's that. Old. I mean, you can make a lot of money doing that too. I'm just saying, you can make a lot of money out there just scamming stupid people, and that's what Glenn Beck did. Gold, gold. Uh, what's his uh, gold core? What is it's, his? Uh, his gold line, isn't it? His gold line. Call I gold line know. right now. He puts on. I don't the, know. He turns on He's, the uh, the uh, audio effects. He has like the call gold line right now. And yeah. you will uh, be okay whenever the uh, Joseph Smith uh, guys come back, and you can have like thirty wives. It's cool. <laughs> Buy my rose-colored glasses. <laughs> Buy my rose-colored X-ray glasses for five ninety-nine. Screw white people. F whitey. Buy a T-shirt. You got too many toys, Doug Owen. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you, you, you talk no. about the jumping into the technology age. I'm I'm over here jumping right in, so we can do this show and we can talk crap about the powers that be and the. Uh, I mean, this is the guy. This is, but this is case in point. You know that, that you you see something online or you yeah. see some political like Berkey uh, water filters. I'm looking at them right now on your site. I like Berkey water filters. I drink I out of them. I don't feel I, I I don't feel bad about it at all. I don't know about other things. I'm... Don't don't get all defensive. I, I like them too. I, I, I drink out of them every day. My son. I I, I don't care. It's good. That's good. I'm, and and I'm glad I, I that filter they... all of my son's formula water with Berkey water. Absolutely, swear to God. What about the Doomer dog? Does he get Berkey water? Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Depends if he peed on the floor the night before or not. Yeah, she. Well, it's a she, and she, she's good about not peeing on the floor. She's actually really great about it. And uh, you know, it just depends. You know, if she's been outside playing and there's no water, and I'm waiting, we forgot to fill the Berkey. Then you know, it could be. I had to. Uh, I got an announcement. I I had to. Uh, I, I had to let one of my Doomer dogs go. What? 
to, to a better home. Yeah. Well, to, I, I don't well, even know. Wait, oh, I don't the, even... the liberals were coming after you. I remember this. And uh, the Illuminati wanted your dogs. And yeah, so they, they sent you, They left you a note. Yeah. We want your dog. No, I, I had a little... It, it was a dog that my my son showed up with from his mother's house who was being abused where he was at. So my at your former, mother's house or his mother's no, house? No, no, no. No, it, she knew the, the party that had it, and she ended up with the dog. But she's already got four dogs, and she asked if we'd give it a try. Well, I said, yeah, sure we will. And plus the city I live in is a no-kill shelter, allegedly. I mean that's what they say anyway. So if it ended up at the shelter here, uh, plus it was a young dog. It was cute, and, and it it got picked up right away. But uh, I, I just I couldn't I couldn't take it on. Not another not another animal that was absolutely destructive to the extreme. I mean, th- there's nothing this dog wouldn't chew up, uh, and it was attacking my other dog, the original Doomer dog, Trixie. Uh, and it's not good. Trixie's, no, not good. And and this is a Pomeranian uh, a Pomeranian Corgi mix. So not a very big dog, but uh, full of piss and vinegar. And uh, poor Trixie was having chunks of hair ripped out because, uh, what? you know, he, oh, yeah, no. well, well, not violently. I mean, he was just always, you know, yipping at her and, and <laughs> wanting to play. My 12 year old Trixie is like, oh, God, give me a break. So we found her a new home. A him. A new Aww. Home. Aww. Well, I, I, I guess that's good. It happens. Yeah. It happens. You take on more uh, uh, than you chew, <laughs> you know, more than you can handle. And yeah, obviously, uh, you have obviously to, obviously. uh, yeah, you have and to move if, on. And if it would, move on. I, it would. He would still be here if you we couldn't find a home for him. But I'm sorry, uh, I'm laughing about this thing. It's a picture of ISIS. They've got Santa captured here. That uh, Craig producer Craig 33 on Twitter sent me. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I didn't see this picture. It's pretty hilarious. It's uh, can uh, Santa's been captured by ISIS. They're about to behead him. ISIS beheader John from the UK that has drones flying above him. Yes, that's a real story, according to people that uh, tell the truth on the TV like Glenn Beck out there have you seen hashtag have you seen blackout his, uh, Friday have you seen his Doomcast uh, picture for Doomcast 70 no 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 oh, it, no it's, it's in uh, Skype it's right now All yeah right, let me see let me see <laughs> we got some people to thank actually uh, a, a few I didn't, I didn't have any to thank but go well uh, you've been sucking sorry no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you you don't suck. Otherwise, people would never send us anything. Anyway, uh-huh. uh, you're uh, part of this. Uh, Michael says, it was either donate to you fine fellas or order a few sea and slaves. See, the few sea and slaves. Yeah, he, he's he's like catching it. them. Yeah, the memes of the show. I, I let my, my parents listen to this the other night. Take a spin around the feet, meet new friends, feel the breeze. Take a spin around the feet, come back, play. Become a slave. There it is, Become slave toy. A slave. That's so creepy. Take yeah, I've taken that thing out of here. It's slave toy's gone. Uh, thanks for all you do. Wish you could give more. I wish I could give more. Uh, the show is worth it. So that is from Michael. Fifty bucks right there. Thank, and thanks, Michael. Let's see. Had another one. From WePay, which is the alternative to PayPal, and it came in through our Ever button, which is a uh, a deal that we have to use to kind of merge between <laughs> between WePay, which is funny because the the founder of WePay was on this show that my wife watches, where right. this celebrity wife club or whatever the, the this lady gets you a wife f- hooks you up with checks, and the guy was this ginger that. Uh, Either that ran we <laughs> do not disparage our ginger listeners out there. Sorry, my sister is a guy. I mean, ging- ginger ginger ladies are always, you know, that, that that's respectable. But just guys that uh, whatever. I'm you're not, not you're not into the Richie Cunningham types. No, uh, I'm thinking of what what's the football player that's that's a it's a receiver that's a ginger, and every time he takes his helmet off. I don't know. Drives me nuts, though. I don't know. Uh, there was another one here. Let's see. From uh, Stansel, uh, who uh, gave $10. And uh, he had a note, but it was private, I think. Uh, let me see. We had another one. Got Michael. Where's the other one? Good thought. You're getting rich over there. Yeah, here's a Doomcast. It says Doomcast donation. Aha. William says... Uh, Doom Cruise 2015. The idea alone yeah. is worth a donation, and uh, he gave us 25 bucks, and we Thank got 24 dollars and 66 cents. So we got a we got a hundy, a big hundy for episode 69. And I love the uh, artwork, the album art that yes. uh, 
Mr. Producer Craig. Producer Craig produced Always for us is. our 69 heads. Uh, you were upside down, right? I know. I saw that. Yeah, I the, was upside down. You were the yin. I was the yang. Uh, I yes, liked it. I was yinning. Yeah. You were well, right yin. now in, in, in Doomcast 70, I'm going to be the fetus that's well-armed, and everybody can uh, check that out once we get that posted. And uh, with that $100, I am going to buy 576 rubles, my friends. Ooh, do it. 57? I'd wait a little bit. I don't think it's done falling. Uh, so, oh, don't, okay, you're, you're giving me crap about, uh, you know, talking crap about Russia. Where we, right. it, No, no, we you're saying there, they're we, done and they're riding donkeys and they all have a hectare and uh, <laughs> and they grow uh, they grow grass so they can I, – I think you've watched, you know, maybe one too many North Korean documentaries and, and you're confusing the hey, they, they use North Korean slaves in Russia, in Siberia. They got to they gotta deal with Kim Jong-un. Yeah, I watched a Vice documentary on it, so it has to be really? real. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, in Belarus, done. you know that they, they you can't you can't be unemployed. They uh, round you up, and uh, you have to uh, work uh, conscription. There's a uh, there's a uh, <laughs> uh, you know Lukashenko is a good buddy of Vladimir Putin. Well, anyway, uh, there in Belarus, the carpenters wanted to go on strike and. Uh, basically said no that you know the national security the national livelihood depends on these guys and so right. they they're just forced to work <laughs> they can't they can't not work so it's, they gotta it, have a job this is what prescott bush you know uh, poppy bush's dad wanted to have here in america i mean that was the whole thing about uh trying to install a fascist coup with uh with uh general smedley butler you know, and that's that was a really popular idea. You know, round up all the people that have uh, learning disabilities, all these special needs people, and uh, <laughs> kick them out, kill them, whatever you have euthanize. to do, euthanize them, st- sterilize them for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know, people that aren't working, either put them in a prison camp or uh, you know, put them through some kind of rehabilitation course where you can work them in a factory. So that's kind of commonplace over there. So it's not to, you know, not that I think that uh, what we're doing over there is somehow altruistic, virtuous. I understand the scam. I know that uh, Victoria Newland, the Kagans, the same neocons that are trying to, you know, it, actually, there's a lot of people. There's a contention of people that are trying to resurrect a new type of Israel, an expansion into the Ukraine. There's a lot of Zionists that. Want to use this as? A, I thought Argentina was going to be the next. Uh... Well, they they like Nazis there, so uh, those people might <laughs> some of those Zionists might feel <laughs> right at home. Ironically, there in Argentina, but uh, you know, nonetheless, the uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we do talk about on this show, and I think that we have a, a I think a very unbiased approach to it. And so when I look at these countries, not to you know, not to try to use that to you know, gloss over our fallacies, but right. really to highlight the differences and why we should care about, you know, this country and why it's, it, it it's not exceptional. We don't do anything that's that much different, but we do have more of a voice than others. And, and, and a lot of places can and have, I mean, just ask, uh, ask people that are journalists in Mexico and South America, how it's working out. And, yeah, uh, if you if you can find their mass grave, you can you can maybe glean something off their remains. Right. So, um, yeah, does that make America one hundred percent awesome? USA all the way, kill whoever's in the way. No, it doesn't. Absolutely does not. But no, and and I think you know for myself, Doug, I it's seeing the country moving towards that kind of uh, Prescott Bush wet dream. You know what I'm saying? It, it's seeing us move that direction. I'm not saying we're there, and I'm not saying that we don't have. You know, you and I are having this conversation right now, and we say some pretty crazy things. And in some countries, provocative, yeah. I mean, yeah, downright illegal, seditious yeah. by by some claims. Yeah. Let's wrap this thing up, buddy. Really? Um, it's been an hour, hour ish. You know? Oh, you know it was hilarious last week. Six uh, episode sixty nine. I encoded Tonight. the show. It was exactly sixty nine minutes to the second. Did yeah, I not know. try to do it. Was not part of the plan. Didn't realize it till way afterwards, and kind of blown away by it. It was like, okay, is this the uh, you know the world saying it was an what omen. we're doing? Yeah, is this it's an right. omen? You almost feel like that a little bit. You know that 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 something something's going on there. 
All we're right. about at 69 right now, if I'm not mistaken. It's a good time. It's a good time. Yeah. Yin and Yang. All right, Yin my friend. My name's Charlie McGrath. My website's wideawakenews.com. My friend, my founder, the guy I argue with sometimes is Doug Owen. His website is blacklistednews.com. Together we have, what do we have? We have uh, a beautiful little channel called doomcast.com. And I, I wanted to, I started there for a minute because I want to pull Greg into the mix on these wrap-ups because uh, he is a uh, part of the team without a doubt. And I want to thank you. Producer Craig Harper. always bringing us artwork and the yes. yang that's in really the and most doing the thing. mix-ups and posting videos. And now that he uh, remember what the password is to the YouTube account, he can get back on there. But uh, thank you very much, Craig, for your work. Doomcast.com. Follow us on Twitter. Where? At Doomcast Show, that is uh, the handle, and of course your handle, Wide Awake News, and me, BLN Radio. You can text us, comments, thoughts, all of that at 512-222-3067. Until next time, take care. Yes. Thank you for the folks who donated as well. Thank you Oh, much. yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, I want to hear I want to hear Sarah Palin again along with the Squirter Lady. Mm-hmm. Can you play it again or is it dead? Uh, of course I can play it again. Yeah, I just want to hear it back to back without me talking over it. All right. Uh... Is how we baptize terror. Waterboarding is how we baptize terrorists. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a squirter, Dale. That that is uncanny. You like it? You like it? I I do like it because it's it sounds like her, <laughs> and there's a nexus there between waterboarding and squirting. Right. Exactly. I think one, 